Uh, today's stream is round four of Junkie's Japes, tournament set uh, Moriarty versus Calavantis. Players have already selected their first characters and are tossing the coin. Here we go. Looks like Moriarty's running Zangief, Calavantis running Umina. This is an alternate art Zangief, however, it is functionally identical. No gameplay changes here. Looks like we have Mecha Zangief for style points. Uh, and some unique card backs. Looking fancy. Very nice. Uh, I believe we just saw a. Oops, I forgot to shuffle. That did not look like a mulligan, since in a mulligan you do not shuffle the cards back before shuffling. <coughs> oh, let me know if I have any audio issues. As usual, I will assume that I am audible. And yes, I know that there is some background noise. I've not been able to figure out what to do about that. I might be able to do one thing, actually. Uh, hmm. All right, well, that's as good as it's going to get. Okay, uh, Amina preps turn one. Does not look the Dreamland. That's a little bit of an unusual turn one. Uh, Zangief closes three with a cross. That is very, very certain Zangief. Zangief loves range one. Big old range one boy. Wants to get in your face, give you hugs, lots of love. All right, Amina running out to range three, and we have the second cross dropping on Zangief's side going to range one. And second cross on <laughs> Amina's side going back to range three. Both crosses down on both sides of the field. That is very early for all the crosses to drop. Pretty interesting, actually. Hmm. All right. So with no more crosses, Zangief doesn't have to worry about getting cross readings out of his hands, but also uh, he can't rely on the run boost to get him back into melee. Uh, this telegraphs an assault. Assault can trade down against a sweep or a focus. Uh, loses to hollow space, although losing a hollow space here is pretty costly. Oh, uh, it was the spike. Gets called out by a defensive assault. You mean they're not afraid to go to range one. That's pretty unusual. She boosts defend. Well, Zangief doesn't have gauge yet, so if she wants to trade with him, now is the time to do it. Still with no card in Dreamland, she is not threatening that stun immunity that her character ability would provide. Uh, spinning Power Driver loses to Grasp. Defending on curve pays out for her twice in a row. She preps to reload that hand. Zangief moves forward with jump in. Advance one, draw three, draws return. Good reload. Zangief losing the mix ups pretty hard here. Uh, she boosts the second defend, clearly not valuing that spike in this matchup, which makes sense. She expects it to take place largely at range one. Zingy probably being a little bit more cautious here. Yeah, very obviously. The standard play would be to just advance one to range one, but again, without gauge, he is not threatening his character ability, which lets him gain power and speed by spinning a gauge to make a stack critical at range one. You can make it critical anytime he wants, but at range one in particular, he gets those stats. Initiates with a block, hoping to bait something valuable. Oof, the reverse happens. Sweep is going to knock that Siberian Blizzard second copy out of his hands. He does not have access to that jump in for a later reload. Probably was looking to spend some force here for armor and then jump in to recover his hand. He is going to get the gauge out of this. He paid at least one force, so we'll take only two damage. Uh, yep, only one. Oh, sorry, only one force, so two damage. All right, Amina has three gauge. She transforms Terror Whispers from hands. As an action, you may spend two gauge to force the opponent to wild swing in defense when you initiate that strike. Uh, to be clear, this is as an action, not whenever you initiate a strike. All right, Zingief initiating. Plays assaults, trades down, but gets to range one. All right, Amina has four gauge. Uh, we have a critical strike from Zangief. Now is mix-up time. She could lose this really hard. Uh, she'll trade. She hits for three. She takes seven. Yep, flying power bomb has stun immunity and before close two, so she can push her pull. It doesn't really matter. Either way, he closes two with his before effect. Ends up the same place. Well, the same range. And currently there are no markers on the board, so the board is effectively symmetrical. All right, here we go. Finally, a card in Dreamlands. That is a dive to Dreamlands. That immune dive, meaning that she can guarantee getting out of melee if she needs to. Also, she can cover a range one crit sweep or crit flying power bomb if she needs to. All right, we have a critical wild swing from Zangief. Uh, that is a block, which amusingly might be the best option against a hollow space. Hollow space in this position uh, beats essentially everything Zangief can throw, since it dodges attacks at range one and then allows her to retreat. All right, we have Dream Telling before gain power equal to power card in Dreamlands. Max of plus five. That is plus five power here. After that, this gauge, telegraphing the Call of the Dreamlands Ultra, which is a two-gauge Speed 5 Ultra that hits for a, uh, well, a variable amount of damage, usually at least seven. In this case, it would be two plus five plus question mark. Striking. We have a crit. This looks like a Banishing Flatten to Call of the Dreamlands. It is, yep. Pays two gauge to whiff. That is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, Call of the Dreamlands is faster, but Banishing Flat, when critical, has a tax range four greater to not hit you, so it dodges, then Zingy closes too. 
Uh, she does get the Dream Telling to her gauge, because she was not stunned. And then Zangief spends one force to advance one. Alright, I mean preps, and Zangief does a critical strike from hand, which is going to beat this uh, Dark Thoughts quite nicely. That crit, that crit after ensures that he moves back to range one after hitting this attack for five damage. Alright, it is now Amina's turn. Paying force, probably going to pay force to move based on that. Nope, reconsidering. Okay, it's two force to get out of the corner. A little bit more, three force, yep, there you go. Doesn't want to end the turn at range one so that Zangief can just strike immediately. Alright, one force to advance, Zangief keeping that at range. She backs up four spaces with assaults, knowing full well he does not have a cross to let him run back in. She is striking, probably again that call. We'll see what happens. Uh, this could also be Dark Thoughts. I think the other hollow space is down, but I'm not actually sure. Dark Thoughts and Call are both very threatening projectiles. We saw one of the Dark Thoughts and one of the Calls drop. Call whiffed on the crit vanishing, and Dark Thoughts was stuffed by the suplex. It is Dark Thoughts. It is Dive. All right. This actually could be worse for Zangief. He whiffs. He takes six damage. He even loses an Ultra, and then she may even steal it into her Dreamlands if she wants. However, he advanced three spaces in the process, which means it actually could have gone worse for him. All right, she does decide to steal that ultimate atomic buster. Uh, she may actually have the HG use it at some point, but more importantly, she can ensure that he's not allowed to boost. Um, boost with it. Okay, it looks like she's currently deciding whether or not she wants to take it or not. All right, decided not to take it. Never mind. Going to keep that dive. All right, that would have prevented him from boosting super armor or playing ultimate atomic buster. Ultimate atomic buster is not much of a threat at the moment, nor for a while. However, the super armor is a very good boost. Looks like Zangief's going to pay one force from gauge to advance leaving him with only one gauge. Well, if you consistently win strikes, or at least trade, then you don't need one gauge. He's down eight life, but that actually doesn't mean that much. All right, Amina retreats one. Wait, you're right. Yeah, have to pay the other card from Gage. This is obviously strictly worse, and probably not a decision he would have made at the time, but it is the most important, like, it's the easiest way to rectify this game state, and it's actually extremely important that Zingief do not have an extra Gage to spare. Every Gage matters. Alright, again, move action, getting out of range 1. Zingief playing Key Charge, there you go, yep, needs to have some Gage to threaten. That makes perfect sense. Zingief 1 Gage is a world of difference from Zingief with 0 Gage. Alright, we have Parry. Unsuccessful. We have a hand with Sweet Flying Power Bomb, Spinning Power Driver. Uh, opponent looks looks like they are copying it for reference. Uh, and then Zangief spins the No Normal Sweep to advance one. Makes sense. Still has a very potent set of options in that hand, especially since we know that Amina does not have any crosses. Uh, well, now she might actually, because we just saw her reshuffle, taking the reshuffle action, shuffles her discard on her deck, and draws for in a turn. And Zangief initiates with a critical strike, I believe, yeah, from hand. And it's the sweep, which he must have drawn afterwards. Alright. Still holding those two cards. Unfortunately, that does still lose to hollow space here. That is the second hollow space, at least in theory. Of course, Amina has now drawn from a shuffle deck, so we don't know for sure. Range 4, pretty favorable for her. Most, most importantly, Zangief no longer has any gauge, and is at a life deficit. Alright, she prepares. Zangief uh, takes three shuffle action. Draws a turn. She initiates, and we have a wild swing here. That is call... Might, uh, don't think it can be lethal, we'll see. It's at least plus two power, alright, so that is two plus one, two, three. Uh, by the way, the hit effect has both players reveal their hands, gains power for each special and ultra reveal. So, three from Zangief. Uh, presumably, these cards over here are the hand reveal, since Amina has not actually revealed her hands, but, uh, yeah. Alright, well, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 7 over 2 is 5, doesn't stun, so Zingief did get to draw a card. I was not paying close enough attention, I hope he did that. Alright, Zingief prepares in his turn. Down 14 life. Uh, Umina has stun immunity nearly on demand, as long as she doesn't exceed, she has probably got this very easily clinched. If she does exceed, then she's hoping to attack dives before effect onto her attacks. Uh, so Umina's exceed only costs 4, and she has 2 transformations, being a season 2 character. Uh, sorry, being a season 2 character, that discounts her exceed cost to zero. 
Characters in 7th Cross uh, have a icon which says each of your transformations in play reduces your exceed cost by 2. So minimum 0, of course. Alright, she initiates with a block, then you quad swings a grasp, she's just getting some gauge, trying to bait some sort of response. Not successful in that. Alright, Zangief advances 3. Goes to range 1. He does not have gauge, so he's not as threatening as he would like to be. I believe he is still holding a known copy of the spinning pile driver, although I could be mistaken in that. Immuna looking like she's considering boosting. Just strikes. Alright, what do we got? Cross into Lariat. Uh, that is 3 over 1 armor, 2. That is lethal. Good game. Yep, got that cross. Alright, game 1 goes to Calavantis. Amina takes it. Uh, tournament format means that Amina is now out for the sets. So Calavantis only has two characters left. Lychee and Arakune, or Arachne. Moriarty has three, that is Zangief, Moriarty, and Mbison. Uh And each of them can choose for any of those. So Calavantis has two choices. Moriarty has three, they will choose simultaneously and then simultaneously, or cho choose secretly and then simultaneously reveal. They're using the uh, hidden character selection areas at the table. Uh, looks like we have a M. Bison and a Lychee. Alright, uh, again alternate arts. This, uh, I believe this is a joke about, uh, not even just a joke, just a reference to Kami being a DNA level clone of M. Bison. Whatever that means in Street Fighter lore. Did I say Marathi? Meant Monado. Either way, we've got M. Bison. Hey, the M could stand for Marathi, you don't know. Versus Lychee. Uh, players are setting up their references. Looks like Moriarty has decided to go first. Drew too many cards. <laughs> anyway, shuffling that back. And now Mulligan. Callum Mulligan early. Technically the first player Mulligan's first. But apparently just has already made up his mind. Alright. Mole 3 from Bison, and Bison is up first. Uh, Bison also needs to gain 28 life and shuffle the deck. There you go, deck is shuffled. I'm sure they'll notice life at some point. Alright. Bison action. Yep, Bison's ability lets him, as an action, add a card from his hand to his gauge and draw a card. And then he draws for end of turn. It's kind of like a change cards 1, except the card goes to your gauge instead of your discard pile. Alright, Lechibu is fierce. You did not drop the staff. Which means that for the time being, she has plus 0 to 1 range uh, and minus 1 speed. Alright, she is now dropping the staff after Bison takes the move action to advance 1. She boosts light. This is what we call Way of the Warrior. Uh, there is a boost in Season 3, Street Fighter, called Way of the Warrior, which is plus 2 power plus 2 speed. So often, if you see this stack configuration, people will affectionately refer to it as Way of the Warrior. Plus 2 power, plus 2 speed. Extremely threatening configuration of stats. It's now Bison's turn. Taking a second to start with the Looks like Bison might be considering that critical, having that card engaged. <coughs> we have a crit, we have one card. Alright, let's respond with an EX uh, dive, which will outspeed and deal 8 damage. That easily crushes Somersault School Diver, which even critical only has 6 guard. Even if it wasn't crushed, however, it would have missed due to dives before effect. Alright, Lychee has dropped 1 sweep, 1 grasp, and both dives though, so a lot of cards are now down. Uh, she uses her character ability to pick up the staff. Sorry, she uses her character ability to put the staff in her space, then Mountain Bow's effect as an action you move this one or two, to move it under Bison, threatening that plus one power and hit gain advantage. Sorry, that hits plus one power and gain advantage on Mountain Bow itself. Alright, it's not Bison's turn. Looks like this is a raw strike. No particular uh, extra shenanigans here. It's not EX, it's not a wild swing, and it doesn't have any gauge, so it certainly wasn't critical. So Magashi needs a sliding kick. Alright, so Magashi. Uh, has two hit effects. Looks like they're going to... Yep, Lightyear activates the Mountain Bow first to remove this to gain plus one power, which means that does four damage, which breaks Sliding Kick's guard of three. Lightyear gains advantage, and then the after effect places Mountain Bow back in the opponent's face. She's striking. This telegraph's all green, perhaps spike. It is four wins, actually. Uh, all right. So this is a four special. She has to pay a force. Calculation from Mountain Bow decides to remove Mountain Bow and then use the hit effect, push or pull one, then draw one. 
Note that since these are both hit triggers, you can activate them in either order. So she decides to remove it while while in Bison is still on the staff, then push her pull one. Like she's turned, she places the staff in her space, then as an action moves it too. We're seeing her move it directly to that space, just as short hands. Bison preps, and then Lychee plays Fierce. That is the second copy of Grass, by the way. Alright, back to Bison. Lychee exerting very solid pressure here. Bison advances one. And Lychee moves the staff under him. Without gauge... Okay, here we go, yep. Now Bison has a gauge, meaning he is capable of threatening some decent defensive options. Notably, Head Stomp is a speed 6 attack, if it's critical letting him defend above curve, and potentially with an EX head stomp defending uh, two points above curve, with a lot of power. She initiates with an EX, alright, this telegraphs 13 orphans, possibly all green, depending on what she's afraid of. I believe all green is unbeatable here, uh, only really loses to block. We know at least one bo block is down on Bison's side, I think only one. I haven't been paying very close attention though. At least not to which cards it dropped critical and one card that is head stomp that is all green all right all green checking that crit head stomp actually checking the ex crit head stomp making sure she does not get out sped all right so all green range three exactly uh hit effect she is not in exceed mode however this hit effect will go off giving her plus one power for a total of six seven eight nine dealing nine damage over four uh f from 14 life to take bison down to five she then places the staff in her space moves it to has to turn back to bison all right bison strikes one card from hands probably feeling a bit desperate at this point she does not have the other all green because she played the EX. Uh, looks like she does, however, have Re Reach Robin the Kong, a speed 6 card, which will let her move into the staff space, hit for 4, and then place the Mance in the opponent's space in after effect. That stuns Bison out of his on curve assault. Alright, Lychee now boosts Lashi. Uh, let's seal your hand, draw 5 and strike. And strikes probably playing on curve, uh, something that Bison cannot beat but could possibly block. Oh, he apparently reconsidered. That is an invalid attack. She's playing Unarmed Lunge. Uh, Somersault Skull Diver actually will beat this. Um, yeah, he's not going to stun it. However, he can advance one or two, and then it's his choice. So either way, he wins the strike. He must advance one or two. If he decides to hit, then that's obviously advancing only one. Waiting for the decision. There we go. Alright, and then because he is not between Lychee and her Manson Bow, this before effect does no good. Alright. Lychee's offensive pressure finally slows down for just a moment. Does she have a good defensive tool against this? Uh, she does, yep. Alright, sliding kick. Crit sliding kick is only 6 power. Bison closes 2 hits, does not send the focus, and does not push it out of range. She hits back for lethal. That's game and that's set. Alright, 2 0 in Kala's favor. Uh, Umina over Zangief, and then Lychee over M. Bison. Very fast set, very good play, very good players. Alright, hope everybody enjoyed. Hope you all found that interesting and or entertaining. And uh, yeah, go play some Exceed, it's a fun game.